My name is Cody Jones, for those of you who don't know me. I'm going to go ahead and apologize about my voice. I started losing it on Tuesday, and it's been an out, so bear with me. So, and the other guy was Keith Brigham. He'll be walking around a little bit. And there's our email addresses in case you have any questions about the program and what we're going over today. So, so a couple of things we're going to go over the setup, which is has some similarities to the desktop, but it's actually a lot easier to set up than the desktop program. We pull a lot of the information out of your My account, and it just kind of automatically transfers over. <clears throat> and then I'll just go through a simple tax return just to give you the idea of the flow of how it works and how it compares to the desktop program. One quick question. Is there an additional charge for the They don't interact together, so it's use one or the other. But it's, it's the same price as premium. So you couldn't use both? You can, but they don't interact. So like I have people who do a thousand individual returns and 200 business returns. They only use the individual for the online, and then they also buy the desktop for the business. But you have to pay two <clears throat> yes. Now we're working on that. This is a kind of a new problem because uh, we just started selling this a few years ago. What our hope is and the goal is to add the business software in there as well. But we want to get the individual side in line with where the desktop program is first, and then we'll add the business in there later. Uh, timeline for that, you'll, if you see Nathan walking around, ask him, I think it's in the three to five year goal. Um, so, so hopefully we'll have it pretty soon. <laughs> so just a brief history of Tax Slayer. Um, some of you probably already heard this story. So in the 60s, Aubrey Road Senior started what's now Rhodes Murphy here in Augusta, Georgia. So one person, one office, kind of like you guys. Now we have 20 locations and we do over 20,000 tax returns just in this area. So he ended up passing away and Jimmy's uh, second son, I think took over when he was like 26 years old. Jimmy's actually still with the company as the board of directors now. Uh, him and Carl and Zane, semi-retired. They still help out with the, some of the, the larger roles in the company. They pass it on to, to Brian and Scott Jimmy's two oldest kids, and then Ashley, who you guys saw last night, which is one of Carl's daughters. So, I'm doing the Glenn now, I'm turning the... <laughs> so after, you know, they took over the tax business, you know, Jimmy had this, you know, idea of, you know, the new thing's gonna be e-filing returns. So he had um, the software built to do that. Not only e-file, but bank products they saw a need for like we don't want to be bill collectors anymore we need to get a, a way to get paid so we're not hunting people down all year to get money from them. so that's how we one of the reasons we built uh, tax layer initially was for us just our own tax office and as we grew and it was working out very well for us you know he thought we could probably sell this thing and so we started just in the georgia south carolina area and then we blossomed out to nationwide and we sell everywhere and we're you know we do i think we have 10,000 or 20,000 users of Tax Slayer now, and we also have the VITA contract, if you guys don't know what that is, for the volunteer work with the IRS. So this is, I think back in the 90s, what the software used to look like. Um, so you, you probably remember that since you've been with us for 20 years. Um, so it's, it's updated quite a bit. So now today, I already went over this. This is what they'll tell you that you'll need for your desktop program. This is kind of irrelevant with the web-based software. You can use a Windows computer, a Mac, your iPad. I get on this thing with my phone. Now, I wouldn't do a tax return on your phone. That would be kind of hard to go from screen to screen on such a small thing. But you can use basically any device that has internet access and a web browser. You get access to the program. So with the desktop, you'll have to have this. Minimum, right? And then, but a printer, obviously, you still want the best thing you can get. So this is what the, when you first log in, this is the screen that you see with the web-based software. This will be the main menu or the dashboard is what we'll call it. So on the left side here, are just some kind of tools almost like you have at the top with the desktop. And then you have menu items in the center. So the message center is kind of a way to communicate. If you have multiple offices or multiple preparers, you can communicate with messages amongst each other. And the rejected clients, they, Nathan went over this a little bit yesterday. That's where if you get rejects, they come in and they filter to that specific area. You can address them and fix them. Same thing on the desktop, there's an icon at the top. So, and I'll go over some of this later, but to set it up, 
like I was telling you, you do it pretty much from the My Account. So you don't have to physically type a lot of stuff. It pulls it directly from your My Account. So this is My Account. Everybody's familiar with this, right? So the difference here is you have create your account link instead of your download links, okay? So that's gone. You don't do that anymore. So after you create it, it's just going to say go to this website. You don't have to go there to get to the site, though. It's online.taxslayerpro.com. You create a username and password by clicking this. It syncs with your My Account. So now you have the same exact login. So in the desktop, you had to create a new login. This is the exact same thing. You don't have two different logins. Same one. So after I hit create and I go through the, the sync that Nathan and Glenn showed you yesterday, it gets, lets me log in. So when I log in for the first time, this is what I see. And this name, Welcome To, is whatever you set it up to be. Welcome to Fast Tax or whatever your company name is. You can do that if you want to. Well, it, I do. I kind of chop it up a little bit as we go on. Okay. 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 So, so to set it up, there's configuration, just like number seven inside of the desktop program. So when I click on that, this is the menu item I see. Office setup, ERO setup, preparer setup, just like in the desktop program. So this is me setting up Cody inside of the program. There's my information, and you can sign the, your name here. So it, just like in desktop, if you have premium, it saves your signature. You can use the Topaz signature pad, just like in the desktop, or your mouse. You don't have to have the Topaz signature pad. So you also have security templates, just like in the desktop program. It's exactly the same. So Lori, when we, you asked earlier, what's the advantage? Now I'm setting this up from wherever I want to, I'm not physically doing it on a computer. I'm doing it from wherever I want to online. Now I can limit access to what people can do that work for me. So if I'm the owner, I want every one of these boxes checked. I have unlimited access to everything. If it's a preparer, maybe they're new, I want to uncheck boxes so they can't do certain things. I don't want them configuring different, moving stuff around, changing my fees or whatever. Uncheck those boxes, just like in the desktop program. <clears throat> now, some people are concerned, well, I don't want my preparers logging in from home. No problem. You can whitelist your IP address, and so they can only log in with their username at your office, if that's how you want to do it. So we give you complete control of how things work. Yeah, but everybody will be on the web base. This is the one you purchase, yes. So you have to have internet access and a web browser. So it doesn't have to be a Windows computer. It could be a MacBook. It could be an iPad. It could be your cell phone. I wouldn't recommend doing returns from your cell phone, but you can at least get on there and look something up if you need to. Your, your client calls you and says, hey, I need something. You go, Boom, I can do it on my phone. So you got a smartphone, you can do it. Well, the hope is we get it almost the same as the desktop, because more and more people are asking for this. They're not integrated, though. Not currently. No. So you can't like do work on the desktop and see that information on the mm -hmm. Is yeah. it two separate fees? Like if, if I wanted to do the desktop in the online? Yes. Okay. I, I wouldn't recommend that. Oh, so the only people that do that, that I know, they just want this for individual and the desktop for the business package because there is no business package in the online program. That's something we're working towards for the future. <clears throat> you can set up your fees just like in the desktop. This is also in the configuration. So this is just an example of 1040s. I went in there and added a general prep fee for my 1040s. You can have a keyword search if you're looking for something specific so you're not scrolling through hundreds of documents that you want to add a fee for. So if you know something specific that you want to find, you can do it that way. Once you add the fee, hit enter and it saves. You can do a custom fee or a discount, just like in the desktop. So I just did some two fake custom fees and a discount and I added my own fee in there and I saved it. So now you can also do a print configuration just like in the desktop. So there is a default print setup 
Same thing as a desktop program, but if you have something specific that you want to print out or omit from printing, you can do it just like in the desktop here. So now we're going to go over how to start a return. So configuration, this is very simple. You don't have to have a network. You don't have to go through that whole process. It's literally you put in your, your EFIN information for your company, you create your prepares. That's it. That's all you got to do. So to start a return, we're just going to click on Start New Return here. If you have the app, it's right below that, Import App User, just like in the desktop. So this is basically where we were just a second ago, right? So it's the app. What's the that? App. The app. Yes, just like in the premium desktop, absolutely. Except you don't go to Tools, Pull from App, there's just a dedicated place right, right, right below it, right? So here's a little bit different from the desktop. There's not two different areas to go in our social. It's back to back right here. So you'll enter that in twice. And this is where it'll ask it if it recognizes the social from last year, if this is something to use year to year, you can pull it forward. So you would just say yes at the bottom. Yes, import my data. So I selected no because I want to show you what it looks like to do it from scratch. So again, a little different from the desktop, this has a Q&A, interview guide. Ask, it can ask you questions if you want it to. So if I were to click that, it would ask me specific questions on trying to help guide me on which filing status I want to enter in. I'm just going to do a simple head of household. I'm going to click on that. Now so you could see this better, I did blow this up for you. So this is normally personal information, your address, all that phone number goes all the way down. So here's your name, your social, address, and everything. And then there's a save button at the bottom. After you enter the personal information, it'll ask you for dependent information. I selected yes to enter a dependent. I put the child's information, last name populates, just like in the desktop to save you keystrokes. You can change it if the name is different. Birth date, social, relationship, how long they were with me. At the bottom, there's a save button. If I want to enter more dependents, I click add a dependent or qualifying child. I can continue to add more if I want to. If I'm done, I can click continue here. So I blew this up so you could see what this is. This is the menu just like in the desktop. This is basically the same exact thing. So if I wanted to jump to income or deductions or whatever, just like in the, I just click on it. Like it takes me right to it. This will be following you around everywhere so you can jump around if you need to. You don't have to go next, next, next. Okay? So we're in the federal section. So now here's what I was just talking about a second ago with the Q&A, the interview guide. You hit guide me and I ask you questions. Or you can just jump straight to enter myself. So I mentioned earlier if you have preparers who maybe aren't seasoned, they don't know what they're doing, you can force them to do guide me if you don't trust what, that they know what they're doing. So it'll ask them questions every time. That's just an option if you want it. But for this, you guys know what you're doing. I'm going to click enter myself. I'm not going to go through all those questions. So if I click enter myself, and if you notice here there's skip income, that's basically the next button to go to deductions if you want to. So that's still an option. You don't have to use the menu on the left side. You can go next, next, next if you want to. So if I click enter myself, here's the income menu just like the desktop. This is 100% the same thing. So this is where it becomes familiar for you guys. If you use the menus with desktop, this works exactly the same. There is no difference at all. So I'm just going to do a simple head of household with a W-2. So if I click on, so here's the income menu, the very top, so you can see a little bit better. If I click begin, here's the W-2. So it's not condensed into that little sheet there that you're used to. It's in an actual web browser, so it's a little bit bigger. All the EIN information saves just like in the desktop. So after you enter it once, it's in there forever. So you hit the EIN, fills in all the company information for you. Here's the bottom. So if you scroll down on the page, there's the rest of the W-2 information. I typed in 25,000 in box one, refilled everything else. So you just type in the tax withheld, just like in the desktop, if I need to override these other numbers, three, five, four, and six, I can. But it pre-filled it just like in the desktop. And here's the very bottom of the W-2. This is the state information. Same exact thing, guys. 
But now you have a drop down instead of typing the state. You can just do a drop down. Um, how often will it save or, or does it <coughs> Every page. Every page it saves. Yep. There is no save feature. As long as you return, next, okay. click on a menu item, it'll, it'll save it for you. So I've already entered one W-2. If I want to enter another W-2, it's right there, add W-2 wage statement. I can continue to enter more as I want to. <clears throat> Once I'm done, I hit continue. It'll take me back to the income menu where we just were. So this would be very, very familiar to you if you're used to the desktop program. So if I want to now, I can hit continue at the bottom and it takes me to deductions. Or I can just click right on deductions if I want to. Well, I'm, again, this is a simple W-2. We're not going to do anything else. I don't want to get too deep into this with you guys, but it's basically the same thing that you're already used to, just in a different format. So if I wanted to, again, I can use the navigation on the left side here with the menus, or I can click Continue over there. So this is slightly different with the health insurance. So if I go back, health insurance has its own little item over here on, on menu. So if I get done with federal, this automatically pops up. Or I can have click that health insurance tab to just jump straight there if I want to. No idea what's going to happen with health insurance this year. But last year, this is how it worked. Assuming nothing changes, this will be a requirement. So you just start questionnaire. This is where I like this actually better than the desktop. With the desktop, it asks you a couple of questions, and then you have to jump. If you have something specific you need to enter, you got to go into the menus a little deeper. With, with the online program, it's right here as you're doing it. So it's just a simple yes or no, did you have health insurance? Continue. Did you get it to the marketplace? So with this specific one, it's simple. But if you would have said yes, it would have continued to ask you to enter more information. I don't have to jump into a menu later to enter that information like the desktop. So here are my people that I've entered so far. If I have somebody else in my household that I haven't entered for health insurance reasons, I can enter it now. If I'm done, I can just continue to move forward. Again, it's asking me my more health insurance. Did you have it all year long, yes or no? If you would select no, then it prompts you for more information. So we've done the entire federal return. So it tells you after, yes ma'am. I have a question about the health insurance and we struggle with this on the desktop version also. Everything's fine and dandy if the entire household has the same health insurance for the same length of time throughout the year. Mm -hmm. When there are, um, you know, say the husband quit this job, was without health insurance for five months and then got another one, and the rest of the family all had health insurance through the other job or mm -hmm. something like that. There's no way we can enter those things in there. Like if there's, if there's different health insurance answers for different members of the family, that is so hard. I don't know if this allows. Uh, I think it's easier to do in this one. You think it's easier? How mm -hmm. can I choose, like, the kid that you put in there? How can I choose that the kid doesn't have one? Well, it, this depends on how you answer the questions. Did everybody in your household have it for all 12 months? You would say no, then it prompts you for more information. And that's why I said I like it better on this one, okay. yes. Because you don't have to go back and forth like in the desktop. It's much, much easier to do it here. Surprisingly, many households that that are different. Mm -hmm. Right. <clears throat> you're welcome. So after I finish the healthcare questions, it tells me, congratulations, you're done with federal. So if you're in a state that doesn't have uh, income tax, you can just continue. But if you do, you would hit add state returns. Then it gives you a map. You can physically click on any of these blue states, and then it fills in your specific state for choose, or just go to the drop down you could select your specific state. So I selected Georgia. And then this is where, again, this becomes very familiar. What kind of Georgia state return is this? I selected resident, just like in the desktop. Once I hit selected resident, I'm going to hit continue. And then it pulls all my information from the 1040. So if this is a simple return, there's really nothing you have to do, just like in the desktop program. 
tells you that you're done. You can add more states at the bottom here. You click add state, but if you just have the one, you just click continue. Once you're done with both federal and state, there's a refund calculator, just like in the desktop. There's one at the top. This is on the right, and it jumps out to, out to you a little bit more. It's got some color, so it pops. And this follows you the whole time, so as you're editing, it goes up and down, it changes. And if it's an amount due, it turns to red, which is like the desktop. <clears throat> so then it takes you to a summary page. So this is where it's different. So in the, in the desktop program, there's a 1040 right at your face in the hub of the main menu of the software, right? And this one, it's in the back end. So in the summary page, this is the top of it. So it just makes it a little bit more legible for you to see. This is what it looks like in the summary view. So if I were to hit show details on like income, now it gives me all my menu items, just like in the menu. So if I click on seven here, wages, salary, and tip, that takes me to the W-2 section. So this breaks it down just like in the menus. The other view here is the 1040. So if you see summary view, if I click that, it takes me back to the summary view. If I hit the 1040 view, then it takes me to the 1040 view. So it lets you toggle between the two. So it gives you whatever preference you want. And this works just like in the desktop program. So if you scroll down, I can click on line seven and it takes me to the W2 area. So it's just where it is, is just different. That's the only thing. <clears throat> but if everything looks good and I go over it, now it asks me the EIC due diligence questions. So in the desktop program, it asks you right after the income. This one, it asks you after you're complete and done with the return. So this is all on one page and you yes, no it all the way down. You add your notes in here instead of having to kind of go box, box, box. Now it's all laid out for you right there. Once you're done, it takes you to the e-file page. This is the top of the page. It lets you know it's ready for, for e-file. So from here, if you're doing a bank product, I know the button's kind of dark, they're changing that for us, but if you click that, that gives you an estimate of your check with all your fees coming out of it. And then for your return type here, this is where you select if it's a bank product, if they're paying you up front, direct deposit, mail check, and so on. So I'm just gonna do a regular paper return so I didn't have to enter any deposit information. So here's a calculated fee. So this is where you set up your fees and it pulls from your fee setup menu. This is where you would override if you want to. Just like when you exit out of the return of the desktop and you type over at that point if you want to. So here's where the preparer security comes in. You can eliminate this process from a preparer you don't want to have access. They can't, this grays it out, they can't change it. <clears throat> but if you see there, it's slashed to the calculated fee. I changed that just, to, just so you could see what it looked like. Electronic filing fee, we still don't charge that. That's just for you guys if you want to add one of those. Audit maintenance secure lay ID, they went over that yesterday, but you'll see that if you opt into that. And here's all my total fees at the bottom. Here's my state refund. So this is basically what we call an accordion. So it's as you finish one and hit save and continue, it then goes down. And it, so you don't have one big long page you're scrolling through. And it saves your progress. So now this is the state section where I can select it just like in the federal. And then you would go through the process. Of, yes? So on the state, actually, it would be probably easier than what we've been doing. Way easier. Because you've got to go there. The Back and forth. Online. Absolutely. Okay. That's one of my biggest pain points with the desktop. It's kind of annoying, to be honest. But when you get used to it, it's not a big deal, I guess. But this is the kind of goes, takes you through the whole steps. Right. Absolutely. What you got? Do they have a goal of how soon business returns to be available? You talked to Nathan Wanamaker about that one. <laughs> I've been asking for it since the day I found out about this. Because, I mean, this is the future. I mean, this is yeah. what everybody's going to do. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> this could be good, but i got to tell you right now, only three years is not going to get it done. i got divorce couples. i got legal stuff mm -hmm. that i got to get for people. It's got to be seven years. You can't just do three years. Couldn't go back. I, I agree. Okay? Uh, That's also a Nathan Wanamaker thing. Yeah. <clears throat> so I think the thought process is this is what we support, right? So if you call in about a 20, 2002 program, support's not going to help you. Then we don't even have access to that anymore. I don't even know what that looks like. I've never seen it. So you only get support for three prior years plus current because I guess that's the IRS requirement for your yeah. your records or whatever. You go back seven years. Right. Fraudulent. You gotta have those returns. So. It's a great question for Nathan. Yeah. 
Because I would love to see more than three years. I'd love to see every year possible if we could. At some point, the taxpayer has to be responsible for Exactly. <laughs> Any other questions? Is that it? <laughs> I just try to give you the basic. This is how it works. This, this class has never been taught before. So I know I, we have a lot of questions. I just wanted you to show you how it compares and contrasts for what you're used to. So if you want to see it, you can get a demo, play around with it if you're really interested in this. We can get you a demo so you can really take a look at it. No, uh, I would get with your rep if you want to get like a detailed demo, but you can go to the website and just click on that you want a demo and it'll let you play around with the tax return. If you're thinking about switching, that's the first thing I would do. Because I've had people call me last year and the year before, hey, I want to do this. Make sure first. And some of them are like, yeah, it's cool. It'll work for me. Some are like, no way. No, it ain't going to work for me. It's not going to work for me. It does not do business for them. That's for the new people. So I have a question. We all here are tax layer desktop users. Mm -hmm. So.